Hello and welcome to the FT's Global Commodities Summit. I'm here with Yusuf Ali Reza, the Chief Executive of Noble Group. Yusuf, welcome. Hello, Neil. So, can we perhaps start with just talking about China? You're clearly a big trader in the, the Asian region. Are you worried about the slowdown? Do you think the government can control what's happening at the moment? Do you think they have the tools to do it? I mean, from your vantage point, what, what's your view? First and foremost, I think it's important to put things in perspective. Uh, China growing at 7, 7.5% seven uh, in 2013, 2014. Um, the, the dollar value of growth is somewhere in the order of one and a quarter trillion dollars. 2005, China growing at 12%, 13%, the dollar value is 750 billion. So even though the growth uh, percentage is lower, the base effect is, okay. is very, very important. So lower growth of a bigger base. So you're not particularly worried about the slowdown there? You no, think? I, th I think China is going through uh, a transition from being the manufacturing export hub of the world to the consumption, consumption and services hub of the world. That's a difficult transition, will take time. Uh, but the Chinese policymakers are very good at what they do and they have plenty of policy flexibility. Another China-related question then. I mean, we're seeing a lot of news at the moment about China now becoming um, you know, an importer as opposed to being sort of self-sustaining as in the past. How are those flows affecting your business and how do you see that affecting things going forward? I think specifically on the agricultural side, I think it, you know, it doesn't take a genius to figure out that if you have 21, 22% of the world's population and 7% of the world's arable land and you have water issues, a policy of self-sufficiency in water intensive commodities is not a sustainable policy. Mm -hmm. And the Chinese policymakers understand that and have expressed that. I think what you'll see in China is a transition away from self-sufficiency to a combination of self-sufficiency in, you know, in certain areas, a reserve policy in certain areas, and then most importantly, confidence around origination. That's the right policy for China. But like everything else in China, the move will be, won't be revolutionary. It will be evolutionary in terms of their transition. But we are seeing the Chinese make some move. We've seen one acquisition, Nadira, they've bought a, uh, a stake in that. And they're also talking to you perhaps about buying a stake in your agribusiness. I mean, can you sort of tell us a bit more about that, why that's a deal that you're looking to be doing, I mean, and how that fits in with the company's strategy? I obviously can't comment on any specific sure. you know, transaction. What I will say is there's, there's three core principles of our, um, of our agricultural strategy. Um, first and foremost, I've said time and time again, uh, our agricultural business is not for sale. Mm -hmm. right? We believe in the benefits of diversified platform. If you look at Noble, we're one of the most diversified commodity trading houses, and we'll, we believe in that benefit. Mm -hmm. The second thing I'd, uh, I'd say is we're committed to the asset light strategy. So whatever we do is, you know, would be in, in line with that. And the third thing I'd say is it's very popular now for people to be bearish on China and bearish on Asia. Uh, but for the foreseeable future, China and Asia will be the most important regions in terms of driving the S&D fundamentals mm -hmm. uh, of most of the commodities that we're involved in. Um, now, moving on to one transaction we can talk about, X2. You've invested 500 million there. Or you talk there about the asset light strategy. It sort of occurs to me that you're investing money with a person that can go out and buy mining assets, run mining assets, and give you the, the off-take so you can use that and, and, and fill it into your network? Is that the key driver of this deal? I think there's two key drivers. I think it's very important to know what you're good at, but also to respect what you're not good at. Right? Our core competence is a supply chain manager. Mm -hmm. It's moving the physical molecule from point A to point B and managing the market risk, credit risk, operational risk associated with that. Our core competence is not being a miner. It's not being an ENP company. It's not being a farmer. Uh, it's not being a bank financier. It's not being, you know, a consumer product, right? So what we want to do is we want to work in the middle of supply chain, become best of class in terms of managing that supply chain, and then partner. You know, partner with ENP companies, partner with mining companies, have them focus on what their core competence is. So when you look at X2, you know, that's exactly what we're doing. Um, Mick Davis and his team are focusing on mm -hmm. what their core competence is, which is mining, uh, and we're focusing on what our, our core competence is, which is supply chain management. In addition, uh, we have investors that have significant pools of capital. Uh, in total, there's $3.75 billion of, uh, of capital mm -hmm. that's been raised at yes. this point. There will be more capital raised in the future. Mm -hmm. um, and again, we're partnering with other players that, uh, you know, their core competence is investing in assets, putting that capital to work. So this private capital model could be something we see more of from you and indeed the industry going forward. Very much so. Yusuf, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Neil. My pleasure.